PC recording has started. Cloud begun. Backup is rolling. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the Committee on Land Use. At this time, with all panelists, please turn on your videos. I repeat, all panelists, please turn on your videos. Thank you. To minimize disruption, please place all electronic devices to vibrate or silent. Thank you. If you wish to submit testimony, you may do so at Lanius Testimony at council.nyc.gov. I repeat, Lanius Testimony at council.nyc.gov. Chair Salamanca, we are ready to begin. Thank you, Sergeant of Arms. Good morning. I am Councilman Marafari Salamanca, Chair of the Committee on Land Use. I would like to thank our subcommittee chairs, Moya and Riley, for their work on our subcommittees. I am joined remotely today by council members <clears throat> Adams, Ayala, Barron, Borelli, Senior Diaz, Feliz, Redenchik, Kuhl, Levin, Chair Moya, Reynoso, Chair Riley, Public Advocate, and Public Advocate Williams. And uh, we've also been joined by council member Brooke Powers. Today we will vote on applications referred out from both of our subcommittees. Uh, but before I begin, I would like to recognize the committee council to review the remote meeting procedures. Thank you, Chair Salamanca. I am Julie Lubin, council to this committee. Council members who would like to ask questions or make remarks should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of the panel. I will announce council members who have questions or remarks in the order that they raise their hands. Chair Salamanca will then recognize members to speak. We ask that you please be patient if any technical difficulties arise today. Chair Salamanca will now continue with today's agenda items. Thank you, Council. From our zoning subcommittees, we will vote to approve rules three considers LUs 806 and 807 for the St. Joseph's 1949 Bathgate Avenue rezoning related to property in Council Member Felice's district in the Bronx. The proposal seeks a zoning map and zoning text amendment, including changing an R6A district to an R7D district and the establishment of a mandatory inclusionary housing area, mapping option one and option two to facilitate the development of an 11 story residential building. The building will contain approximately 130 units of supportive housing and 157 units will be for residents um, earning 40 to 70% of the AMI with an average AMI for the project at 55%. We will also vote to approve LU 792, the 16th Street Zoning Special Permit related to property in Council Member Traeger's district in Brooklyn. The proposal seeks a special permit for commercial use within the special Coney Island mixed use district to facilitate the development of a two story commercial warehouse building at 2706 West 16th Street. We will vote to approve the modifications LU 790 and 791 for the 909 Castle Hill Avenue rezoning related to property in Council Member Ruben Diaz Senior's district in the Bronx. The proposal seeks a zoning map and zoning text amendment, including changing the R3-2 district to an R6B district with a partial C1-3 overlay and the establishment of a mandatory inclusionary housing area mapping option one and option two to facilitate the development of a five-story mixed-use building, including approximately 35 dwelling units, nine of which would be permanently affordable, as well as a commercial and community space, community facility space. Our modifications will be to strike MIH option two while retaining option one. We will also vote to approve pre-considers LU 797 for the Crab Shanty 361 City Island Avenue rezoning related to property in council member Mark Jonai's district in the Bronx. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to establish a C1-2 commercial overlay district within an existing R3A district, which would bring the Crab Shanty restaurant and its longstanding commercial use into conformance with zoning. From our landmark subcommittee, we will vote to approve applications number 20215029 SCM submitted pursuant to section 1732 of the New York School Construction Authority. This application is for a proposed site selection of property located at 3761 10th Avenue in the borough of Brooklyn for a new approximately 860 seat primary and intermediate school. This school would replace a lease space north of site currently occupied by PS18 and PSIS 278. The site is in district represented by council member Rodriguez. We will also vote to approve LUs 803 and 804, the Bedside Central and North NIHOP Cluster UDAP and Article 11, 
This application submitted by HPD requests approval of the designation of an urban development action area, an urban development action area project for such area, and the disposition of city owned property, and an exemption for real property taxation pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. Both items are related to four vacant city owned properties located at 187 and 187R Chancy Street. 772 Myrtle Avenue, 890 Myrtle Avenue, and 1119, I'm sorry, and 119-125 Vernon Avenue in Bedside, neighborhoods of Brooklyn, represented by Councilmember Cornegy. These actions will facilitate the construction of a problem, approximately 45 affordable homeownership cooperative units distributed across the four sites. The sale prices will be affordable for households with incomes between 80 and 130% of the area median income. We will also vote to approve LUs 805, the 72-H transfer of Block 3930, Lot 50. This application was submitted by the Department of City-wide Administrative Services on behalf of the Mayor's Office of Resiliency pursuant to Section 72-H of the General Municipal Law for the transfer of city-owned property known as Block 3930. Law 50 in the borough of Staten Island to the United States of America, acting by and through the National Park Service. The proposed transfer will require that the entire property be used as an enhanced swamp and public access path in fur furtherance of the environmental mitigation required by the South Shore Staten Island Coastal Storm Risk Management Project being undertaken by the federal government. The property is located in the district represented by Council Member Maddie. We will also vote to approve five applications to facilitate the Melrose Open Door Project in my district in the Bronx. These applications submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development will facilitate the construction of 12 new residential buildings in Bronx Community Board Districts 1, 2, and 3, and that between them will contain approximately 70 affordable cooperative home ownership units. Previously, units were planned to be affordable to household earning incomes between 80 and 130% of AMI. Now the proposal has been modified to be affordable to households earning between 63 and 83% of the AMI. The project will be developed by Manny under HPD's open door affordable home ownership programs. The property included in the project are vacant or will be demolished for new construction. LU's 801 is a Euler application for the designation of an urban development action area approval of the urban development action area project and, and disposition of the city owned property located at 667 Colwell Avenue, 675 Eagle Avenue, 672 St. Anne's Avenue, 840 Tinton Avenue and 842 Tinton Avenue in the Bronx, Community Board 1. This action will facilitate the construction of approximately four buildings with approximately 28 cooperative units. LU's 800 is an application for amendment to the Mount Haven Urban Renew Air Plan to exempt two sites in Community District 1, 675 Eagle Avenue and 672 St. Anne's Avenue for the floor area ratio, open space ratio and parking requirements for the urban renewal plan. LU 799 is an application requesting a waiver of the area designation requirements of section 693 of the general municipal law, waiver of the requirements of charter section 197C and 197D and approval of the project as, as an urban development action area project for property located at 1048 Fail Street in the Bronx. Community board two. This action will facilitate the construction of a new building with approximately four affordable cooperative units. LU802 is an application for the designation of an urban development action area approval of an urban development action project for such area and approval of the disposition of a city owned property located at 881 Brook Avenue, 901 Eagle Avenue, 959 Home Street, 1298 Ho Avenue and 1013 Home Street in Browns Community District 3. This action will facilitate the construction of approximately five buildings containing approximately 32 cooperative units. LU-798 is an application submitted pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law requesting approval of an exemption for real property taxation for all the properties in the project areas. And also today, we will also vote to approve proposed introduction number 1572B, a local law to amend the administrative code of the city of New York in relation to requiring a citywide equitable development data tool and racial equity, equity report on housing and opportunity, sponsored by public advocate and myself. 
I'd like to thank all my colleagues who have joined as co-sponsors. This bill was first, in, was first introduced in May 29, 2019, stated in it. It was subsequently amended as proposed intro 1572A. The Land Use Committee held a hearing on the amended bill on January 11, 2021. Since then, the bill has been further amended as the version what we have before us today. Across the nation, there is renewed movement and energy from local governments and organizations of all types of established new tools to help address racial equity. Intro 1572B has the potential to be a na nationwide model for how cities can build the goal of racial equity into their land use and housing policy making process. I will try to summarize the key points of the bill as briefly as possible. The proposed bill would require applications for certain land use actions to provide the city planning commission and the public with a report on racial equity in connection with their project. These are new racial equity reports on the housing and opportunity it would include a statement describing how the proposed project relates to the city's goals and strategies for affirmatively furthering fair housing and promoting equitable access to opportunity. Moreover, these racial equity reports would be required to draw data for a local study area from a newly created equitable development data tool established by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development and City Planning with citywide, borough-wide, and where statistically reliable data is available, neighborhood and community district level data. The equitable development data tool will provide data on six categories, demographics, economic security, neighborhood quality of life and access to opportunity, housing security and affordability, housing production and a, dis and a displacement risk index comprised of indicators of population vulnerability, housing conditions and neighborhood change. The bill would require data to be desegregated by race and ethnicity and include a 20 year look back for trends wherever available. Additionally, for covered applications and connections with residential projects, the bill will require such, such reports to state the expected rents for market rate and affordable units and the corresponding incomes needed to afford them without incurring housing cost burden. The reports will also provide the race ethnicity for such households. Together, the equitable development data tool and racial equitable equity reports will help the public, city agencies, and elected officials better understand and combat racial disparities in the land use policies. This bill will deliver greatly expanded information on displacement risk in our communities and help ensure that we consider the racial equi equity implications of new development. As New Yorkers continue to push for fair housing and racial equity, developing tools to achieve these goals in the context of the land use approval process is of the utmost importance and this bill is a significant step in that direction. I strongly recommend my colleagues to support this groundbreaking legislation. Public advocate Jamani Williams has been pushing for this, the adoption of this legislation since he originally introduced it and is here today to provide some remarks. Public advocate Williams. I thank you so much, uh, Chair Salamanca. As mentioned, my name is Jamani Williams, I'm public advocate for the city of New York. Uh, I want to thank you, uh, Chair Salamanca, and the members of the Committee of Land Use for holding this very important committee uh, vote today. And thank you again for your support on this piece of legislation uh, from day one and helping Shepard uh, through to where it is today. Thank you very much. Your support as a chair has been remarkably important uh, to getting where we are today. Uh, for many years, land rezoning has been seen as a tool for commercial progression in our city. However, uh, the way land rezoning has been executed in New York uh, has often and widely been seen to be uh, one of the main contributing factors uh, that have led to or exacerbated uh, rising rents, gentrification, displacement, and inclusion, exclusion. Sorry. Uh, the pattern continues because rezoning applications are approved very often without having all of the necessary information, including data on the individuals who already reside in the project's area. This bill, uh, introduction 1572B, co-sponsored by Chair Salamanca, will address this issue in two ways. The first would be the creation of an equitable development data tool, which the Department of Housing Preservation Development and the Department of City Planning will be required to create in collaboration with other agencies. 
This tool will include, but it's not limited to, demographic conditions, household economic security, neighborhood quality of life and access to opportunity, housing security, affordability and quality, housing production, and a displacement risk index. A displacement risk index will consist of signs of population vulnerability, housing conditions and neighborhood change, such as race and Hispanic origin, income, English language proficiency, number of renter occupied housing units, number of rent stabilized housing units, number of income restricted housing units, number of households experiencing rent burden, trends in housing and, price and rent, prices and rents, and the number of housing units with three or more maintenance deficiencies. This tool, which will be updated annually and available for public use, will be used by applicants as part of now mandated racial equity reports for certain rezoning applications. The provision on racial equity reports is the second component of this bill that makes it instrumental into helping to address the problems of housing insecurity in our city. The intention of intro 1572B is not to impede construction, it's not to impede development, but rather to disclose substantial information to equip policymakers, elected officials like ourselves and residents to better discern how a proposed project might impact their community during a rezoning proposal. More than two years to the day when this bill was introduced to the city council, I'm very proud to see how far this legislation has come. With the help of housing advocates, especially the Racial Impact Study Coalition and CUF, who first uh, told me and uh, introduced the idea to me, we have a, created a bill that will further housing equality for New Yorkers. I am also proud to say that my office released a legislative report this morning uh, explaining the need for racial equity report to be a part of the land rezoning process. For anyone who is still uncertain as to why our city needs to ensure that race and ethnicity are examined during the land use application process, I recommend reading this report. This morning, I'd like to join the chair in urging every member of the Committee on Land Use to vote yes. Passing intro 1572B will solidify our efforts as elected officials to make more informed land use decisions, protect people of more color from displacement, and guarantee that the economic development of communities considers everyone who is already there, uh, as well as uh, thanking uh, Chair Salamanca, I'd like to thank uh, Speaker Johnson, and also thank uh, for my staff, uh, Casey Addison, Director of Legislation and Policy, uh, who did a lion's share of the awesome work that got us here, Delcinia Glover, Deputy Public Advocate for Housing, Anika Michelle, Policy and Legislative Associate, Veronica Avis, Chief Deputy, uh, Chief Deputy Public Advocate for Policy, Nick Smith, First Deputy Public Advocate, for all their hard work in moving this legislation forward. I'd also like to thank the Council Land Use Team, uh, Roger Mann, George Sarak uh, Sarkison, Julie Lubin, Brian Paul, Caitlin Greer, and uh, Jason Goldman, uh, who do a great job at helping navigate this. Thank you so much. And I, again, encourage everyone to vote yes. Thank you, our public advocate, Jamani Williams. And I know that you mentioned them, but I need to just give them a shout out and thank them because they were helpful in helping me understand this and getting into the finish line as well. I have to give a big shout out to Ralph Solano from Cuff Church United for Fair Housing uh, for helping uh, helping us get to sit for this night. Um, with that, members of the committee and members rep representing affected districts who have questions or remarks about today's items should use the raise hand button now. Uh, Council, can you uh, recognize any members with their hands up? Council member has his hands up. Okay. Uh, so I see Council Member Feliz. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Wanted to say a few words about the St. Joseph's uh, project. Uh, so today I'll be voting yes on the project. Uh, however, I and my community have questions and also concerns about the project. Uh, the application will help facilitate the construction of housing units, including affordable housing units that are desperately needed in our borough and also in the city of New York. Uh, the application will also help facilitate the construction of 60 units for individuals with uh, serious mental health complications. Um, and the project will be built in a community that has a lot of needs, uh, individuals with uh, mental health complications who aren't receiving the, the resources that they need. Uh, so before the stated meeting tomorrow, uh, looking forward to meeting with the applicants and continuing the conversation about how this project, which I think is a good one, uh, can be uh, used to serve the housing and the services that it offers 
can be used to help the individuals who are already in this community and aren't receiving the housing and also the services uh, that they need and deserve. Uh, so I'm um, in support of the project, but again, before, I think it's a good project, but before the state of tomorrow, look forward to continuing the conversation about how this project and the resources that it offers uh, can, be, can better serve the local community that the project uh, will be built on. Thank you, Council Member Feliz. Are there other members that wish to speak? I see All no right. other hand. Awesome. Seeing none, I will now call for a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the subcommittees and the local members to approve with modifications that I have described, LU 790, 791, and to approve pre-considers applications, numbers 202-150029, SCM, LU 792, 797, 798, 799, 800, 801, 802, 803, 804, 805, 806, and 807, and pre, uh, proposed intros 1572B. Will the clerk please call the roll? Good morning, everyone. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on land use. We'll have a couple. Chair Salamanca. I know. Baron. Thank you. I vote aye on all and ask to be added to 1572B. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Koo. Um, Again, I am all from Council Member Ku. Levin. Is that Levin? Yes, Council Member Levin. Oh, vote aye. Yes. Council Member Ku, thank you. Miller. Good morning. What? Can you hear me, uh, Billy? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, I vote aye on no, and I just want to give a special shout out uh, to public advocate Jamani Williams uh, for his to witness on this very important uh, issue and legislative uh, policy, as well as the Black, Latino, and the Asian caucus uh, with the leadership of uh, uh, land use chair Salamanca. A very proud moment for all of us in fixing something that we know had to be addressed here in the city. Look forward to his passage. I don't know. Thank you. Council Member did you want to clarify? I want I on all. Okay, thank you, sir. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote? Thank you, Chair Salamanca. I just want to congratulate Chair Salamanca and uh, Public Advocate Jamani Williams for this great uh, piece of legislation and the progress that was able to be made in their in their time here in the council. Um, I also want to shout out the people that were doing the work on the ground, Churches United for Fair Housing, who have uh, been asking to just get a better understanding of demographics and data related to these rezonings in a more meaningful way so that we can make a, you know, objective and data-driven informed decisions related to rezonings instead of just assuming, uh, uh, using assumptions to plan our city. So again, just wanted to thank uh, Chair Salamanca, Public Advocate Jemani Williams and Churches United for Fair Housing for the great work that they did. And um, I probably vote aye on all. Thank you. Council Member Gibson. Thank you. I want to join my colleagues in congratulating Public Advocate Williams and Chair Salamanca. Uh, thank you. Great bill. I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Traeger. I vote aye. I'm sorry, Council Member. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. I vote aye. Thank you. Rodenchik. Aye. Adams. Congratulating uh, 
our colleagues, Chair Salamanca and Public Advocate Jamani Williams, as well as members of the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus for this groundbreaking legislation. I enthusiastically vote aye on all. Thank you. Council Member Ayala. I vote aye. Ruben Diaz. Yes, I vote si sí, en todo y gracias a Salamanca. Salamanca, I would like to thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, thank you, Councilor. <laughs> Moya. I vote I and all. Rivera. I vote I. Riley. A vote I on all. Brooks Powers. I vote I on all. Thank you. Feliz. I on all. Thank you. Borelli. I vote I on all. Thank you. Thank you. By a vote of 18 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, all items have been adopted by the committee. And Chair Salamanca, that is a full committee. Thank you. Um, I, would, uh, I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council, and sergeant of arms, and annual staff for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you.